Hello everyone and welcome to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we're gonna to be talking all about filters on the output of a power supply. Now in some previous videos, we looked at filtering action by different components in power supply circuits. And today we're gonna to dive a little bit deeper specifically into filter design, since we've never done a video about this in the past. We're gonna look at the output filters on a buck converter, and we're gonna show what you need to watch for in a spice simulation to verify that your filter is gonna operate correctly. Make sure to hop into All Team Designer, follow along, and let's get started. So first, let's take a look at one of the circuits that we're going to be playing with in this video. Here, I'm inside of Altium Designer. You can see I've just got a basic switching regulator circuit. I've got my two FETs here, and then I've got my output inductor and my output capacitor, and I'm driving a one mega ohm load. Now, if I go over to the simulation dashboard and I just click run, you can then get the switching characteristics and the output behavior from this circuit. You can already see one problem here from the very beginning. We already have some overshoot, and that overshoot is pretty big. We're targeting an output of between five and five and a half volts, and you can see we get this big overshoot almost reaching eight and a half volts. If we just zoom out and then go over to a different part of the time domain waveform, you can see here what the switching noise looks like. So the switching noise is about plus or minus 30 millivolts. So not huge, but depending on what you need to do with this regulator, you might want to then filter some of this noise to remove it from the system. Now, how you filter it really depends on what you do. Some folks would say, hey, just make this regulator bigger, and hey, just make this capacitor bigger. But if you don't have any room in the PCB to do that, you then might want to consider adding an external circuit in order to target that noise and decrease it. So you don't always have the luxury of just making these two components larger because first, they might not exist or might not be available, or they just might be too large for your board. So in that case, we can look at designing something like a filter circuit. Let's take a look at some possible filter circuits that you can use with your switching regulators. So what type of filter do we want to apply on the output of a DC-DC converter? Well, remember, we have all that switching noise that we would like to eliminate. So of course, we want a low-pass filter. The typical low-pass filter that you're going to see attached to a DC-DC converter that goes beyond the existing L and C elements in that circuit is of course just an LC filter in an L-shaped configuration. So you would have an inductor here, this is gonna be your L, and then you'll have a capacitor here, that's your C, going to ground. Now this would be your output from the regulator, so the unfiltered output, and then here you have your filtered output, so we can call this uh, VFIL. You need to select the L and C elements in this filter such that they produce a reduced ripple on the output. But in addition, you need to control the transient response from this circuit. And so we'll see more about what that is once we actually get into the demo in SPICE. Now, the other type of circuit that you can use is of course an LDO. An LDO does provide some noise filtration or suppression, but what you can actually do in addition to just the LC circuit and an LDO is you can use them together. You can use an LC circuit plus an LDO together. So this is an effective combination and essentially what this does is it reduces the noise in the LC section and then passes that over to the LDO so that you can work together to give you very low noise output from the LDO going to whatever your load circuit is. The other thing that you can do is you can do active filtering. Now, active filtering involves something like an op amp. Now, there are papers published in the research literature on the use of active filters to reduce noise in DC-DC converters, and they're specifically targeting the switching noise in those systems. One option is, say, a Salen key filter made from an op amp. So there are some papers online, and if you just go to Google Scholar and Google essentially active filter for switching regulator or something similar, you'll pull up some papers that are pretty interesting on the use of these filters to reduce the noise on a switching regulator. Now, all of this stuff that I've been discussing so far is all for the output side of the regulator. Now, what about the input side? Should we apply filtering on the input side? 
Well, sometimes the answer is yes, absolutely. We should apply some filtering on the input side. The reason we want to apply filtering on the input side is because generally in a switching regulator circuit, it is often assumed that the power source that you're putting in is a perfect DC voltage, which is not always the case. The input coming into your switching regulator could be say coming off of a bridge rectifier, in which case it's going to have some residual ripple, or it could be coming from a power supply that's just noisy. So in that case, what you could do is you could of course apply more capacitance, just a big cap across the input. You could also do a snubber. Now a snubber is going to use a small r value and a capacitor in series. You could do a LC type of circuit in a low pass configuration to remove some of that noise. Now the LC type of configuration you need to be careful with for the same reasons that we would have it on the output because once we apply LC filtering in that circuit, there's the possibility that we add a pole into the transfer function for that circuit, either on the output or the input. LC circuits, not always the best for filtering on the input side, but they can be effective for filtering on the output side. And personally, I would recommend this option if you need to get to really low noise to a load. So for example, in a previous video, we discussed this a little bit with ADCs and specifically powering up a reference on an ADC. You could actually do this to then power a reference on an ADC with a very stable voltage if you didn't have a precision voltage regulator available at the specific voltage that you want. So now I'm back in Ultium Designer. Let's take another look at this circuit here. So one of the things that's important to note about this circuit is that we basically have an RLC circuit across this output. And this load interacts with the inductor and the capacitor in this regulator circuit. So if we want to add in a filter circuit on top of this L and this C, we then need to simulate this filter inside of this circuit because it's going to interact with these two elements and modify the transfer function looking from Q2 out to the load. So one thing we want to do is when we set up a simulation for this circuit, we first want to simulate what our proposed output stage is going to look like. So in this case, what I'm proposing here is that we add in an inductor L1 and C2 on top of the existing L1 and C that we have here in our existing regulator circuit. So if I just come over here to the simulation dashboard, we can take a look at what's going on with this LC filter just by doing an AC sweep. And here I'm gonna set my load to be the same as in the other simulation, and I'm just gonna run this AC sweep. Now, in the AC sweep, if we go to full screen, you can see here that we've got a big peak right here near zero frequency. So we actually want this to cut off at the switching frequency, but we wanna do that without adding in this big peak that we see in this AC analysis. We can see here, if we just look at the tail end of this transfer function, it's definitely cutting off at about the switching frequency. We know this is the switching, switching frequency because if we just do a simulation of this or we just look at our, our sources here, V2 and V3, we'll see what the switching frequency is. So we know it's about 100 kilohertz. So we'd like to cut off there. Now we can see that this circuit is definitely doing that, but of course we wanna prevent this pole from being added into the transfer function. This is why it's a good idea to add in just a little bit of damping here at the capacitor. So to do that, I can just essentially take this resistor, add it in here, and then we're gonna set this to a small value. Let's just go with a couple of ohms. So this is gonna be larger than what you would see typically on most components. Now capacitors, they have some effective series resistance. It's usually small, not all the way up to a couple of ohms. So you may need to add in just a little bit of that extra resistance to provide some damping. So if we go back to the simulation dashboard and then we run an AC sweep, we can now see that there's a really big reduction in that peak. So if you remember from the earlier screen, it was going all the way up to I think 30 or 35 in the transfer function. So that's a big jump. That's a lot of gain right there. Now here, if we just zoom in, you can see that we do get a peak and it's a little bit of a peak. 
However, it's not so extreme as we had before. We brought that peak from 30 all the way down to about 1.4. So that's a lot of reduction. So that's pretty good. If we were to then say, go just a little bit bigger and maybe make this three ohms and run this again, it's even smaller. So three ohms looks pretty good to me. In fact, if I zoom in here, it's barely getting above 1.05. So that's pretty good. So we can use this filter circuit on top of this existing filter that's already built in to this switching regulator. So why should we care so much about adding a pole into the transfer function for this filter circuit? Well, the reason is that when we have a pole in that transfer function, that corresponds to the transient response in that circuit. And we'd like to keep the transient response as small as possible. And that means you need to get this peak associated with that pole in the transfer function to also be as small as possible. So that's why we care so much about eliminating these large peaks in the transfer function. This is the case whether you're doing filter circuits, whether you're doing some other type of analog circuit, doesn't really matter. If you wanna prevent those transients, you need to add in some damping or you need to re-engineer the circuit so that there is no pole in the transfer function. So now let's take a look at what actually happens in the power supply. So if I just copy these over, set them here and then wire these up, we can do a quick simulation first just to see what happens when we measure across the output capacitor. Now, of course, I need to change these designators, change this designator to L2, and then you do want to go back into your expressions here and make sure that you are taking the correct output for the transient response. So if we just run this, you see that we're taking C2 pin number two. So once this runs, we can see a couple of things. So here, right at the very beginning, we have a couple of things going on. First, we actually get somewhat of a larger initial overshoot in this circuit. That's actually bad. If you remember before, it went up to about eight and a half volts. Here it's going all the way up to nine volts. And then it very quickly does settle to the target voltage. Now, if you see here, this straight line, it looks really flat. And if I just zoom in, eventually you do see what the noise looks like. So the noise is actually significantly reduced. And just looking here along the y-axis, you can see here that we're at about 100 microvolts of variation. So that's pretty good for noise cancellation. Now, to reduce that initial overshoot, what can we do? Well, this is where we go back to our design filter. And now we can copy over this resistor into this circuit. So we wanna put it in series with these capacitors. And then here, let's change the designator. And then we can run this again. So if we go back over to the simulation dashboard, run this again, let's see what this looks like. Now we've really got some reduction here in this overshoot. And you can see here that the overshoot is reduced to about one volt above the target voltage, or it's reduced to about uh, 6.3 volts. So that's significantly lower than we had it in the previous two cases, so that's pretty good. But this is where we can start to see the trade-off between adding damping and then adding in that new filter. That new filter does reduce the noise, However, adding in that damping reduces the ability of the capacitor to respond to the current draw that then needs to be given to that load. Because now if we look at the noise again, you can see that we're getting more noise than we had in that previous case. So how much noise are we getting? Well, we're getting about plus or minus 20 millivolts in this case. That's a decent amount of noise and it's similar to what we had previously. So we've gotten a little bit better than we had in the original circuit without this filter. So now let's go back to these resistors and let's drop these down just a little bit so that our capacitor can respond quickly to that noise source. So here, if I go back and then just run another transient, now you can see that we are significantly lower still on our noise. So now we're down to about plus or minus 10 to 15 millivolts. So that's reduced further still. That's pretty good. And here we don't have an extreme overshoot. So we're okay here too. So what else can we do to improve this? Well, at this point, because we're looking for this trade-off between R and C, what you might wanna also do is then increase the value of the capacitance. Typically, it's gonna be a lot easier to take a small capacitor and increase the size than it is to take a small inductor and increase the size. So I would recommend increasing the capacitance here in this filter that we've designed. And so if we do this, 
Let's set this to 47U. So that's definitely a change that you can make on this type of filter. And you can do that without significantly increasing footprint. If we go back over here and run this, now we've got a much better turn on here. So you can see here with this turn on, it does dip a bit during that turn on phase, but it doesn't oscillate significantly. And we can see that we don't have that extreme overshoot that we had before. So just looking at this, you can see here that we almost rise up to the target voltage here during that initial step phase. And then here, a little later when it starts to settle, if we look at the noise, let's just take a look at this. We can see that we have about the same plus or minus noise voltage that we had before, about 10 to 15 millivolts. So that's pretty good. So this is definitely the type of thing that we could then give over to an LDO and then the LDO can help clean up the rest of this noise. So that would be the strategy for using this type of circuit. So how can we investigate this trade-off between the size of our C values in this circuit and the size of our R value circuit? Well, what we can do is we can do a parameter sweep. Sweeping through these parameters is going to allow you to visualize multiples of these curves on top of each other, and then you can pick the curve that gives you the best result and then just use the R and C values for that curve. So if I just go down here and enable the sweep and then hit the gear button here, you can see that I've already got two parameters set up. I've got my C values and I've got my R values here. So I'm varying R2 and C2 in this example. I'm gonna vary this from, let's say 10 to 100U and we'll go in steps of 20 microfarads so that we don't have too many curves and we'll just hit okay. Once I set that up and hit run, you'll see that it'll start running through each of these pairs of parameters. You have to be careful how you do this because eventually you'll get so many curves that it could be difficult to see them all and distinguish between the ones that you really want. But if I just zoom in here to this initial set of curves, you can already start to see that we're picking out some curves that look really desirable. So here, this particular curve looks really nice. The next one down, this curve doesn't look so good. And then you can see here, as I just click through these, I can eventually land on the curve that I really like. And then I could just select those particular values for that curve. So here for this one, for example, in the yellow one, we have 1.5 ohms for the resistance. And then we have, it looks like 89 microfarads for the capacitance. That's how you would go through and simulate all of this in a very fast and quick manner. And then you can just pick the curve that gives you the best results. Thanks everybody for watching. Hopefully this gives you a great overview of everything that you need to start simulating your power supply filter circuits, specifically with passive components. Make sure to leave your comments and questions in the comments section. Hit that subscribe button to keep up with all of our tutorials and podcast episodes. And of course, last but not least, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks.